Hi, this is PDF Bergzerk Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and today we're going to finish off the saving of our character data. So let's open up our project. And let's just take a look at what we have. Okay, but the only thing we have left to do for our initial code for saving our character data is we don't want this button to be clickable if they still have points left. And we also want to make sure that they've entered a name. So if they still have points left or they haven't entered a name, we want to disable this. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll open up model development. And here's our button code for displaying the button. And we'll also have to make sure that we change our current value of a vital to its max value as well, but we'll do that last. So let's go up to our on GUI. I'm going to get rid of these skin calls as I haven't completed mine yet. And right here is where we have our displaying create button. Now on GUI doesn't have a disable for its button, not that I know of. So what I'm going to do is just display a label that looks like a button and display that label until they actually spent enough points. So right above it I'm just going to put display create label actually so I'll just cut and paste it and it needs to be above it I'll go make that function Okay, so display create label. And all we're going to do is display the exact same uh, image except have it be a label instead of a button. And we can do that just by saying GUI style and then quotes button. So I'm going to scroll up to the top here. We'll get rid of these comments too. Disable the button. We'll start it up. And it looks exactly the same as the button, except you can't click it. Now we're going to change this a bit. Now you should actually make a GUI style for this and make it gray or at least look different than the regular button. Generally you want to gray something out when it's not available. Maybe even change the label to something like spend the rest of your points or please enter a name. But let's just add the if block that's going to swap between the two. So we'll uncomment the button. We'll create the if block. We're only checking. We're only doing one thing in the F blocks. We don't need the curly braces. So we're going to want to check to see if the name is empty. So we'll just cut and paste that. We'll make a comparison to see if it's empty. And if it is, we'll display the label. Else it'll display the create button. So let's scroll down here and I'm going to change what the create button displays instead of just saying create, we'll say enter name. Start it up, enter name, and if we do enter something in name, there we go. So we'll close that. Now we want to check the points. Since we want them to not be able to create their character if they haven't entered a name or have points left to spend, we're going to create an OR operator, which is just simply the double pipe sign. And then we'll want to check to make sure that the points left is greater than zero. 
So those points left greater than zero. And let's go try that out. We'll hit start, enter a name, good old Bob. You notice it still says enter name and we can't click it. So let's just start adding a bunch of points. Let's add some constitution and some willpower. And there we go. We'll notice when it hits zero, this switch to create. Hit create and it's done. So we'll just close that off. Go back into modern development. Now I just wanted to go over the the GUI label call where I made it look like a button. Now all the Unity built-in types have a string associated with them. So I could have went down here and add a line after that to change the button to look like a label or a text area or whatnot. Now this is actually covered in some of the Unity documentation on their website. So I strongly recommend that you go look at it. Uh, I would not really want enter name there though. You should change it to something a little more descriptive. Creating character. Or even just creating. But regardless of what you put in here, I definitely want to change the style so it looks a little bit different than your regular button. Maybe make it look like a deactivated button. So now let's change the current value for our vitals. I'm just going to make a separate function for that and then just call it. So it's going to be private. I'm just going to call it update uh, current value, current vital values. And fix the typo and make the call. We forgot the return type here, which would be void. And now autocomplete should work. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Now, since we only have to do the current vitals, we could actually just come up to where we display the vitals and we'll just copy the, that for loop at least the, the first line of it put it in there we'll close it off so we're going to iterate through the vitals now we'll want to call our character so in this script we call it tune dot we get vital we'll pass in the vital that we want to get which is just going to be CNT, our index. Then dot, then it would be current value. Now we're just going to set it equal to tune dot get vital, the vital we want, which is going to be the same as the current value that we're working on. Dot and adjusted basic value and that should be all that, sh that should work so what we're really doing here is we're saying let's get the vital of whatever index we're at and remember we started off at health and energy and mana at least for the uh, game I'm making and we're going to get the current value then we're going to assign it the value that we have for our adjusted base value for the exact same vital so let's start that up. No errors. We'll hit create. Well, we can't hit create. So we'll punch in some letters and just quickly increase the skills. And we'll add a little bit to willpower so his mana's up. There we go. We'll hit create. That should have saved it. Now we're going to go open that file and take a look.
Okay, and we'll take a look at energy current value. There we go. Health current value. And the other one was mana. Current value. Now I believe that's everything we needed for our first run through on saving character data. In our next little mini set of tutorials, we're going to learn how to load that data back up and instantiate a new character in game. Until then, have fun.